late 1980, early 1981, and I was a struggling musician in Los Angeles, California, and uh, I came to Los Angeles on a Greyhound bus from Jerome, Idaho, 4,000 people, and I had a fucking idea, and all it was is that I wanted to be in a fucking rock and roll band, and I had a band. But something wasn't clicking, and one day at band rehearsal, I made a decision to quit that band. And at that time, I didn't know if it was a good decision or a bad decision, and if I looked at the event at that moment, I didn't have a car, I didn't have a job, I didn't have a band, and I started walking home. And as I was walking home, I thought to myself, there's got to be three other motherfuckers in Los Angeles, California. I can't be the only one that wants to reach into the fucking heart of the music industry and rip it fucking out and change fucking rock and roll history. It seemed like a far fucking cry that that was going to happen in 1980, 81, because it was all about new wave music at the time. And I went home. Actually, I didn't have a home. I lived off of a girl. That's what musicians do when they're starting. <laughs> and on a Thursday night, I made a decision to go to Hollywood, California for no fucking apparent reason. And I walked into the Starwood Club, and I could see him there in my vision, right there. He was sitting on his drums. He was 17 years old, and he was smashing the shit out of those drums. You know what that is? So, What's up? Yes. Well, he's fucked up, first of all. <laughs> I mean, not on anything, he's just fucked up in the head. <laughs> so, I went backstage, and I sit there and I started talking to Tommy. We sit on the floor. I don't know if you remember this. I bought you two beers. I bought myself a rum and coke. And we sit there, and his band was looking at me, and they were thinking, that, that fucking guy with the weird hair is trying to steal our drummer. And you know what? <laughs> they were fucking right. And we Tommy talked about something that night, and I'll never fucking forget it. We talked about how much we loved fucking heavy metal. And something that would become apparently important to Motley Crue in our history and how much we love punk rock as well. We talked about how much we love the bands that came out of the 70s, like Queen and Elton John and yes. David Bowie and Aerosmith and Black Sabbath. Yes. And as a matter of fact, a sick little motherfucker named Alice Cooper. So me and Tommy set up shop, bass and drums, and we were playing these songs like Live Wire and Too Fast for Love and uh, Merry Go Round and Take Me to the Top. And I guess you get the point, is that we were trying to start a band. And so what we decided to do, we made a decision to go to 7-Eleven and buy some fucking beer. <laughs> and I'm glad we did, because there was a magazine called the Recycler Magazine, we picked it up, and inside of it, it said, loud, rude, aggressive guitar player, only available, call me if you're serious, my name is Mick. Mick's clothes were duct taped together, but he had a guitar, and he had, a, he had an amp, and the three of us started playing these songs, but we were missing that important element, a lead singer. And Tommy said, I know a guy, except for he's in another band. And Mick said, well, let's go check him out, and if he's good, we'll steal him too. Yeah! 
So we went on a Tuesday night back to the Starwood, the three of us, we walked in and there he was, our fucking lead singer in white leather pants, a white leather jacket, bleached white hair, and he was fucking singing. I never heard a fucking voice like that ever in my life. We went backstage and he held out his hand. He goes, I'm Vince Neil. And I said, you want to quit your man? And he said, fuck these guys. Come on, Vinny, where are you, buddy? Okay, so you get the point. We made a lot of decisions. We gathered up $26 to our name. We went to Burbank, California, and we had one fucking chance. We had one day in a rehearsal room, and this is how it went down. I handed Vince the lyrics to Livewire, and he looked at him and he said, I fucking got this. Mick turned on his amp, picked up his guitar, Tommy jumped on the drums, I picked up the bass, and at that fucking exact moment, January 17th,